Hello, hello. I'm back with another video. And today I really want to discuss the pain of being rejected by your family. This was inspired by a couple of things. First of all, I've been wanting to kind of approach this topic, but I haven't known exactly how because it does require a certain level of vulnerability. However, I do believe in leaning into the fear because fear is an illusion. We don't have to buy into that illusion. But I also didn't want to make it a trauma bonding experience or a pity party or invite an onflux, an influx of uh, sympathy because a part of learning to cope with this rejection is really recognizing its purpose, recognizing the purpose behind the pain. And that's really what this is about. The second thing that inspired this video is once upon a time I worked with a life coach, stumbled on Twitter a couple days ago randomly. I'm not really active on that account. And I saw her tweet and it was poignant. It was perfectly said. I saved it. It was that good. And I'm going to read it to you. This is what it said. To continue the deeper clearing in relationships lately, there has been a deeper clearing or releasing over the last few days of the family of origin. Over the last few years, we have seen deeply the truth of our family of origin and where we have taken on their karma or ways of being and also where they have kept us locked into certain frequencies or mindsets or behaviors. Now, as we release our roots, we are able to move forward with the life we choose in a healthy way as we are no longer tied to the past of where we have been or where we have came from. Our lives are in our hands and we get to move forward in alignment with what is God's truth. Powerful, powerful words. And uh, it really gave me some perspective. You know, the past few weeks have been tumultuous. There's been a lot of conflict in my family, historically, but especially in the last few, few weeks. And uh, it's come to a head. You know when someone has you so that you just, you're just done. You're just detached. You're just in a state of, okay, I get to accept that I don't believe that this is who you are, but I do believe that I'm beyond the patterning that says that I get to continually have my boundaries broken, that I get to continually uh, be in the presence of such negative thinking and accept that as my reality, I get to release it. I get to accept you as you are and release it. And that's essentially what happened. Uh, this is a long story, but to summarize it, I am a Ghanaian woman living in Canada in a woman-loving woman relationship. I was raised by two Ghanaian parents who are devoutly Catholic. And if you know anything about the Ghanaian culture, you know that it is a collectivist culture. It is a culture that is intensely proud of its traditions and beliefs. And as with other collectivist culture, well, many cultures across the world, they tend to uh, establish their value with how they measure up to the Western world. So especially, you know, my parents immigrated from Ghana. I'm the first generation living in Canada 
there's a huge disconnect, a huge uh, conflict of beliefs between the two cultures. And that was always a sort of internal battle as I grew up because on the one hand, I was living in a home that uh, held these strong belief systems, but living in a world that didn't necessarily agree with everything that I was being taught. So it hasn't been easy. It hasn't been easy for them to accept my relationship. And it hasn't been easy for me to accept that they will not accept my relationship. But the thing is, this actually didn't begin with them finding out about my relationship. It began with my failing to meet their expectations. Their expectations around career, around how I would contribute to the family's perception. And ultimately, it fundamentally shook me to my core because it was a time that taught me that I was not truly seen for who I was, for who I am. My value was only appreciated if it made them look good, if it made them feel as though they were great parents or parents that, you know, molded a successful child. And it's taken a lot of time, but at one point I did internalize quite a bit of shame, quite a bit of guilt. There's a lot of blaming going on, a lot of uh, resentment, anger. And for my inner child, it, was, it felt completely unsafe. It felt like there was nothing I could do to ever possibly measure up. And that I had no idea what my place in this world could possibly be. And it was through all of that rejection that led me to this journey of self-discovery. And coincidentally, you know, these themes show up in so many of our lives. They show up in similar and sometimes different ways. For me, it's literally in my birth chart. I'm not saying that everyone who experiences this will have this exact placement, but there's often something that points to a destiny of having to experience things in order to get to your highest self. That's my belief. I have Pluto in the fourth. If you know about astrology, you'll understand what that means. If you don't, to summarize, Pluto is the planet of self-transformation. Pluto journeys through the depths, through the shadows, it helps you experience uh, uncomfortable feelings that ultimately lead you to self-discovery, that ultimately lead you to your highest evolution. Mine's in my fourth house of my birth chart, which means that these lessons will come through for me in this life, through my family, through my home. And learning that kind of did give me some perspective where it's not that I'm being punished because it is a deeply painful feeling to be rejected by your family of origin. It's not that I'm being punished. It's just that that is my karma in this lifetime to understand who I am, to accept who I am in the face of rejection. So yeah, I internalized a lot of that shame. I internalized a lot of that guilt. And through years of self-development, spiritual knowledge, I've come to a place of finally being able to cope with it. Finally being able to accept that this is the reality and that I no longer need to let it have so much power over me. 
I think it's important to discuss this topic because especially in today's world, so many are talking about low contact, no contact, about the anger, about the self-righteousness. You know, they don't deserve my presence. They don't deserve uh, communication with me. It's rooted in so much anger, but underneath that anger is a whole lot of grief. It's a whole lot of sadness. Anger doesn't mean that you've forgotten. It doesn't mean that you've forgiven. It doesn't mean that the pain isn't there. It's a way of feeling more comfortable, feeling more assured. But to truly heal, we get to learn how to sit with that pain and accept its role, how to forgive. The only way that that has been possible for me is because I, one of my inner values, my core values, is that everything is happening for our highest good. And when I think about it, the rejection that I faced from my family has taught me how to accept myself. It's taught me to rely on my own intuition. It's taught me to continue learning, to not shy away from mistakes, to not live a life that is calculated that is predicated upon making the exact checker moves that are required to get to a limited outcome. It's allowed me freedom. It's allowed me to heal my throat chakra, to speak from my gut, you know, from my heart, to get connected with my spirit. And with that knowing, it's so much easier to find something to be gratitude, find something to be thankful for, to express gratitude for in this experience. That's the only way to cope. When you begin to realize that as a spiritual being, Your experiences here are not the end-all be-all, that there is more to life. And it's easy for me to say this because I know that isn't just theory. I know that I spent my 20s obsessing over this pain, obsessing over being right, over finding out that I was right all along, that my pain was valid. And all it got me was circling myself, going around and round and continuing the cycle of insanity. There was no real progression. There was no real moving forward in my life. I stayed with that energy in my anger. But now, through choosing to cope and release it, I get to be free once again. So this is a topic that, you know, is really important to me. It's easy to talk about it like this in a moment where I'm not activated, where I'm not currently being triggered by something that's been said. And at the same time, when I was activated because you know the healing journey is not linear it's ups and downs it's constant uh it was very difficult for me to find like-minded people who were going through the same thing so i hope to open up the conversation and i hope to make this a series talk about exact tools that i've used to get maybe more intimate with details Thank you so much for watching. I hope that if you are watching, you know that you are loved. Om Shanti.